Hello everyone and welcome to the Midas Civil webinar. My name is Adam Kane and I will be taking you through proceedings today. First of all I want to do a quick sound check for about a minute. So if you are in the room, uh, could you please put your hand up? I see there's quite a few of in it, a few of you are here already. And, uh, we've got most of the registrants have turned up. So can you please raise your hand or put comments in the GoToWebinar comments box and then we will get started in about 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. Um, I see that some of you have raised your hand and also put some comments in the dialog box, so that's brilliant. We'll get started in a moment. So I'll just introduce myself and what we're here to do today. So first of all, we're looking at Midas Civil and we're going to be looking at the Composite Filler Beam Deck Analysis to Eurocode. My name is Adam Kane and I am the Technical Support Engineer for Midas. As you can see, we do have the number and also the email address on the screen. If you have any problems, then please do phone in or email in and we'll respond to you. Uh, we do have, uh, if you do ask any questions throughout the whole of the, the webinar, we do have one of our trained technical support staff on standby who will be answering the questions. And any questions, if we do have time at the end, will be answered in the question and answer session. So I'll just move on to the presentation. So first of all, just uh, about going uh, using GoToWebinar and also maximizing the screen. So some general housekeeping rules. I know you can hear me, and I know you can see my screen now. So, but if you can't hear me, you're obviously set to mute or you're set a very low volume. If you can see the screen or you want to maximize it, just click on the two boxes in the top right hand corner. If your screen saver does happen to go blank, then or or kick in, you just have to wiggle the mouse or just set it to off if you've got a chance. Uh, just using GoToWebinar now, so use the red arrow if you want to minimise it to the side or you can also ask questions in the dialogue box as previously mentioned and any questions we will get back to you at the end or respond to in an email. So just going through the webinar concepts, first of all I'll give you an introduction and also explain the models that we'll be going through today and then we'll just be talking briefly about the, the composite action and Euro codes, and then we'll look at some of the modelling in Midas Civil, some of the application of loads and boundary conditions in form of pressure loads and also construction stages, things like that. Then we we'll look at the analysis capability in stress stresses, moments and everything like that in the wood armour moment. Then we're we'll looking at results extraction, design capabilities, and then we'll also go on to dynamic report generation at the end. So just giving you an introduction. And the structural behaviour. So first of all, we're just today we're going to be talking about the an encased steel beam, which acts compositively with a concrete floor slab. The concrete transmits actions in compression, and the steel acts in tension, just like an ordinary slab. And uh, we the need for the bill of beam decks is based around the reduced depth in the form of the actual and uh, more headroom. So the reduced depth means that you can have vehicle access underneath. So the actual beams embedded into the concrete section. The large stiffness that this creates is a suitable option for strict, strict code-based vibration analysis and deformation rules, where that's actually applicable in, in long spans. So today's example, we've got two for you today. First of all, I'll just discuss the, the top here and talk about the actual filler beams. So there's going to be 15 filler beams at 600 millimeter sensors. And uh, the, the first model is a 15 degree skew. Now this is a, a plate model, which is going to be uh, all based around the the reason for this is for to to Eurocode three and this steel optimization is going to be carried out. We'll also be doing the slab, slab wood armor moments for the rebar calculations, considering the bending and also the torsion in the deck. Uh, the second the second deck is is a thirty degree skew. So once it's gone over twenty degrees, we will need the transverse elements to be inclined and uh, at a straight angle, a right angle to the actual deck. So that's going to be, and we're going to be doing, because it's we're going to be focused on the composite action within this and the composite design to the Eurocode 4 standards. So that's why we've got two different models, because we want to focus on Eurocode 3 and also Eurocode 4. Okay, so we'll go on to the modelling in a moment, but first of all we're going to focus on the creation of the materials and also the sections then we'll focus on the, the final element the slab modelling and also the slab grillage models modelling with the composite sections and that's the, the separation of the two yeah so there we will be flipping between two models but I will 
tell you before I do that every time. Then we're going to automatically a general section property calculator or the general section property calculator that we use within the program and then I'm going to bring in the Midas Civil page now so we have the graphic user interface, what I'm going to do now first of all is create a node and this will create our reference line okay, the extrusion so we're just going to extrude this line to create the reference line for the rest of the structure. Just going to do it at an unequal distance. We've got a 300 millimeter power pit followed by 14 members at 600 millimeters. Then we've got another 300 millimeter power pit. That's our reference line. We just want to rotate that now. Let's go to the rotate function, and we just got to give it a distance or give it 15 degrees. Z axis. Okay, so now we select all. What we're going to do is extrude these again. I'm going to do it in the the x direction. So 0 0.5. We're going to do that 50 times to make the 25 meter span. Now we just want to create the the plate model. So all the plate elements going across. So we've just got to translate these exactly the same 50 times across the structure at 0 0.5 meters centered. So that's the actual model being created. Now we're just going to create the materials to go with it. Now we can, when doing making materials, we can add them. So as you can see, we've got the drop-down menus for the steel. We've also got the grades of different steel. So just going to click S355. We can also import them as well. So we just select a different model, and we can just select and import from any model. We can do the same with sections. So just to add a section. So we just got the BS standard there and we just want to select the actual member. Okay, that's the section properties and we can also change the offset as well. So we just want to go center bottom. We just click OK. Now we're just going to import the rest of them because we've already got an existing model. And that's all of our filler beam and everything. And our left power pit and right power pit, so we just click close. Now we just want to define the left and right power pit, so we're just going to select the, the left to begin with, then we're going to select the right, and it's just a simple drag and drop function straight from the work string. And we do the same with the actual the the thickness. So we just import the thickness straight from another model, so that's going to be 630 millimeters, and that's been created. So we can just select the, the left and right power pits and just select and we just want to make sure that's the concrete. So that's the concrete. Just get the, the thickness so that wants that to be concrete as well. You see we go to the hidden view. As you can see we've got we've created our, our bridge deck now and we can go over to the other model and create the, the 30 degree skew. So it's our blank working space for we're doing the skew angle with 30 degrees now. So it's going to create a node and do exactly the same process we did last time. So we just want to extrude this and equal distance. So we're just going to for the power pit is 0.3, for the beams 14 at 0.6, and for the other power pit is 0.3 again. We're just going to rotate that. So we just want to select all, and rotate from the ribbon technology, and just minus 30 degrees. So we just do that about the z-axis. There you go. So now we just want to translate these or extrude these nodes to line elements to create the deck. So we just want 25 meters and just with one single element. Now we just want to select all of the nodes or the top nodes, and then we're just going to translate them, projecting them onto the line at the bottom. Really neat feature. And we do exactly the same down the other end. Just unselect all that a moment. Okay, it's been created. Oh, I just want to save that. It's popped up. Okay, now we're just going to copy all of the that single element going all the way across the bridge, so we can nominate a distance for this. Just want to go to translate, and we can measure a distance and say how many repetitions we want within this. So we say we want it to be forty. 
nine times. Okay. And what we want to do now is just highlight the old bridge and make sure uh, we've got all the intersected nodes. So just apply there. That's all automatically done for you. Okay. Now we're going to start selecting some of the elements. So we just want to take the left power pit and the right power pit like we did last time we just drag and drop them across exactly the same process but this time we're also going to do it with the transverse beam so we just want to make those into concrete so just select those and bring them across so now to select the transverse beam we've got a neat feature where we can just select by the the y direction or the y axis so when you select all as you can see only things in the y axis have been selected and those are our transverse members just bring that across and those are highlighted and we just give those the transverse beam uh, material properties as well so that's all been identified we just want to go to the section property calculator and now we're going to create the composite section going across so we're just going to bring in the section property calculator and this is the working space now so we're just going to import from the DXF file we've created let's see, take the filler beam in now we've already set up some of the material properties in the form of the steel and concrete. Now we just want to identify some of those uh, properties. We just want to change the bit width of some of the uh, elements or some of the line types. So we just do the top flange, so that's 35, and do the the middle flange. Oh, sorry, the web is 12, and the bottom flange is 40. So we just want to stack these. Now we're going to um, do the concrete as well. Just want to create a section, and create the composite section by generating it. So we got call it the filler beam. I'm going to do the interaction between the steel and the concrete. So we've got two different element types. Let's do the steel first, and just do the same with the outer part. And we're going to do the concrete as well make it into a mesh so select the steel this will be one of the parts and then we'll add the concrete after so that's apply now we're just going to do exactly the same with the concrete I'm going to select the section so we have to go all the way around the outside and select each individual section I'm just going to take a couple of moments to go around here. Just got to concentrate to make sure I don't click on anything else. Okay, now I've just selected all of those. And just click okay, and then apply. So that's the actual composite action between the, the steel and the concrete. So just look at the some of the material properties. The composite action between the steel and the concrete. So here we have the steel and concrete and the steel and concrete combined. Okay, now we just go over into Midas Civil, and drag across the model file. Okay, I'm just going to take the section property calculator out of the way. And we're going to bring in the section. We go to section properties and we just go to add and then we go across to composite. Then we can just select it from the composite center and import from the section property calculator we do have a save so just import that bring it in so we just change the offset because we want it to be at the bottom that's center bottom and we just give it a name called kind of filler beam okay and that's been created so we just bring the filler beam over from the works tree Okay, now that's all been created, we can do the load and boundary conditions, so we go back into the presentation. So now we're going to go through some of the loads and boundary conditions. So first of all, we'll look at the bearing supports in the form of simply supports at the ends of each of the, the bridge deck. And we'll look at some of the static dead loads, like uh, the, the power pit load, surfacing, and some of the other loads that are going to be put onto the structure. And we look at the automatic live load optimization to Eurocodes, 
where the program will automatically do it when we create the, the load lanes and also the vehicles we select. Then we'll just generate all the construction stages for the composite action as well. So I'll just bring over the, the, the modeling space again, the one we're going to work on. Then we'll just go to the top view and just do the supports at, at either end. So it's just going to be simply supported. So we're going to use the polynomial selection. So fix it. Deal. And then we're just going to do exactly the same thing at the other end. Make sure I take off the X and Y. OK. So pin the roller support. We're going to focus on the loads and do the self weight first. So just give it some self weight. Minus one in the Z direction. And then we're going to do the element loading in the form of the power pit loads. So select power pit and just select either side. Make sure our loading's on. So just go for minus 10. And then we'll do exactly the same thing for the this road surfacing as well in the form of a pressure load. So just select that using the window. Make sure all the plates are selected. And we're just going to select the pressure load. The surfacing, so just put that in the global z direction and minus five. Okay, so that's some of the loads on there now. Now we're going to create the, the moving load, so we're just going to select the euro code and then we're just going to create some of the traffic lanes. So we just add those, it's simply a case of we're going to focus on the footpath first, then just one meter, one meter, and 0.8. So we're just going to start. We've got the skew. We've got the skew at the start and the finish, which is 15 degrees. And then we just put the reference point, which is the start of the bridge and the end. So I'm just going to delete that. We we'll just misclick that Go again. So just apply. Now we're going to do lane one. So three meters, two meters for the vehicle, and then uh, two point well, three meters. You know, keep the angle the same, and also just select the start of the bridge. And apply and that's our second lane or lane one go to our second lane now like the same thing just uh, next to it six meters select the first point and the last point apply and we've just got to do the footpath on the opposite side so footpath two with me, I'm just going to click on there and there and then it'll be complete. Just click OK. That means our footpath and our two lanes have been created. Now we just want to select our vehicles. So we just add a standard. We've got, we've got different uh, different loads. So you can do railway traffic as well and you can also do the, the actual the vehicle loading. So we've got different modes or different vehicle loads in the form of different transport vehicles on the railway. But today we're going to focus just on the traditional highway loading. So we just want to, and we can change the adjustment factors for national annexes. So just change a few of those. Click apply. And then we can look at different load cases. So we want load model three, and we've got the LV SV80. Sorry, and we're just going to call it SV80 for the load name. Add that. Then we just want to do the footpath loading as well because we want to be one of those contributing factors. So if we just click OK, that's been added. So now we can focus on the moving load cases, so just to create a couple, so LM1 uh, plus the footpath and just uniform load and make sure we just take all the lanes over, footpath with the footpath load and also keep the lanes in the section lane. Then we'll do uh, plus SV80, let's add that. This is going to be where it straddles two lanes, so we just use SV80 and just take that over to the straddle lanes function. So now we're going to look at the creating the construction stages in the transverse model. So it's going to bring that across. So here we have the transverse model. We're just going to go to the top view. And we're going to create some of the construction stages. So we just go to add and then stage one. So this stage will consist of just the beams and some of the boundary conditions, so supports and the self weight will be the load. So 
So just click apply. You just want to go to the next stage. So this is where the deck is going to be casted. So the cross beams going on top. Now all the boundary conditions and the loads are already in there and that will continue throughout. You don't have to keep on putting them in. And then just put the power pit load. So that would be the element with the power pit loads and that will also be the load as well. And the final stage will be the surfacing. The surfacing, just go to OK. And that's all the stages being created. So I'll just, and we just, what we want to do now is separate the, the composite action in the form of the the steel and the concrete so we're just going to put them in two different stages so just select the material in the form of the steel and just put that in the steel only section and also put the concrete in the concrete or the deck casted section okay just to flick through those sections now just to show you so that's the steel only that's stage one we just go through stage two, which is the DAX been casted there. Stage three, where we've got the, the power pit, and stage four would just be the surfacing, which is represented as a load. So now, just to go back into the presentation, and just going to go on to the analysis capabilities. So, first of all, we're going to do some of the static analysis, then we're going to move on to the live load optimization and focus on the worst case for different elements. Then we're going to look at the load combinations, which are automatically generated to the Euro code. Then we we'll look at some of the bending moment diagrams, stress diagrams for steel and concrete, because we can separate those when we focus on the slab design wood armor moments for the rebar calculation. So I'll just go back into the uh, modeling space now. Just to bring the modeling space back over, we'll just do the load combinations. So we've already got steel there, and you can automatically generate these. Just go to the Eurocode, select them, you can change some of the parameters, you can also change some of the characteristic values for the assessment groups for the traffic loads. Okay, they're all regenerated. I'm just going to look at the reactions. So the reactions that support the either end, so I'm just going to focus on FZ and some of the values. Also you can pick up the worst case and everything like that from this. Uh, we can even look at this in a table format, so we're just going to select table, click OK, that's our table, we can use some of the auto sort functions, we can take over the, the FZ and just take it up to the top and that will sort it all out, there's the worst reactions down at the top, can we just look at some of the deformations and displacements, so we're just going to change the units into millimetres, and we just get the, make sure we've got the legend up as well, So there's all the, the real deform shape. Just take the values off and you can see it on the, the right hand side, some of the values and all the contour lines. Now we just look at some of the forces and some of the, the beam diagrams. So we get our bending moment diagrams, we try and get our worst case out of this. So we take the min and max and LM1 plus SV80. We just go for solid fill, just make sure we take the deformation off and just change the units back over to meters again. So just click apply. And then we have a moment. We have got our worst case, so you can see it there with our max is uh, four two three. So we we'll remember that number when we're trying to find the optimum location for the vehicle. So we just go up to the influence lines and the beam forces. So we just type in that element, which is four two three. Just put three D contours. And that's our influence surface there. So we just want to go to the moving tracer and find out where the worst case where the actual vehicles are. And there you go, that's where our vehicles are located for the worst case. See it visually. Close. I just want to redraw that quickly. I'm just going to look at the forces and we look at the plate forces. So we just go for the average nodal. There's some of the values and just click apply. Just click at the legend as well. There we go, that's our, our plate forces. We've also got our uh, cutting lines going through as well. Our cutting diagram. You see there, we just look at that from the side. Sorry, just going to flip that over. You see there's our cutting diagram going through with our moments. So, which is the 
You see, I just want to look at the, the wood armor moments. And we can give it the angle of the actual reinforcement. So 15 degrees. And we can look at the, the top and the bottom. So we can work out our moments for the actual the reinforcements going to be put in place. See that. And we can also look at that in a table format. So we just put the degrees in. So just want to put it for the self weight. I'm just going to put the 15 degrees in. Okay, we can also sort that. Do use sorting functions and everything like that. Okay. So we'll have a moment. That's the moment at the top and the bottom there. So now we're going to focus on the analysis through the construction stage stages. So I'm just going to pull over our transverse model, the transverse beam. So we're just going to do, as I can say, a bit of deformation, also the forces. So just look at some of the bending, the beam diagrams for each individual construction stage. So we just start off at still. Then we just look at the solid field, look at the legend, and click apply. You see our, our bending moment diagrams appear there, so we can look through this through the different construction stages and see it change. Obviously, with a higher complexity to the bridge, then the more it's going to change as the boundary conditions change. We can look at part one and part two in terms of the the concrete and also the steel. Okay, let's change. We can do the same throughout all the processes, so we can even look at the surfacing at the end. We can look at the stresses, some of the beam stresses, so we can pick any point on the beam. We've got four separate um, sections, so we can look at the top flange and the bottom flange. So we look at the, the bottom flange in part one, which is just the steel. We just click OK. Apply, sorry. We do it for the solid as well. I'm just going to select one section and isolate it. Okay, and that will just show you a bending moment we've got there. So you can isolate any point of the actual structure, so you can cut a plane across it or you can just isolate it like we have done there. Now I'm going to go back to the presentation to look at some of the design features. Then we'll just we'll be starting to come to the end there. So these are some of the design capabilities. So what we're going to do is focus on the steel section optimization as per Eurocode 3, and that will be done on the, the, the skew model of 15 degrees. Then we'll just focus on the design of the composite filler beam as per Eurocode 4, which will be the skewed angle of 30 degrees. So I'll, I'll, I'll move on to that now and just go straight back into the modeling space. So just brought the model across. I'm just going to go for the design and just for the steel optimization for the section. So Eurocode's been selected, Eurocode 3. So still check. Now here's the report, so we see it's in blue, so it's passing, it's at 38% capacity on the member. Let me just look at the graphic. So here is the graphic, you can see the member in the top corner there. Let me just do a, a check in the results and everything. We can also look at the detailed report, which takes you through the Euro code and gives you all the calculations and everything. Okay, you might want to save that. Now we can, what we're going to do is just change the member, just to show you how we can optimise it. So it will select the member as per the code and as per the section database. So if you give it BS standard, now uh, it was it now search all the satisfactory sections. We can select something with a more uh, higher ratio. So this is at 82% capacity. So we can change that section and close it. And it will just carry out the analysis and design again. So now that's complete, we can just go carry on and we can just check the graphic again. And you see the sections actually changed in the top corner. We've got the design parameters and everything. So we just close that now. And now what we're going to do is focus on the other model. Now we're going to focus on the design of the composite section. So we've already got the code selected. We can just go and look at some of the design parameters now we can change any of these you can also just look at the ultimate limit state and the serviceability limit state so now focus on the longitudinal reinforcement 
So we just look at the section, obviously it's nominated all the reinforcement already, but we can change them and we can manipulate them and put more bars in. I just want to do the design results and look at the bending resistance. So here you see the classifications of each of the members, and also the elastic and plastic analysis being carried out. So we just look at the resistance to the, the vertical shear now, and that will come in a table format. We can select it as well. We can filter it down. Uh, we just want to look at the Excel sheet, so we can get all this in an Excel format. So we're just going to go to a, another file and just load it up, rather than going through the rigmarole. And uh, see, as you can see, we can look at the crack, the crack width, look at that, put the concrete and the steel. So you look at all the other different parameters like resistance, vertical shear and everything like that. So the longitudinal shear for the surface ability limit state. Now I'm going to go back into the presentation and just go through to the dynamic report. So this is the dynamic report. What we do is we just uh, upload any of the images, any of the tables, the graphic representations such as bending moments and things like that. And you just upload that into the reports tree which I'll show you practically in a moment. The reason why it's so dynamic is if you change any of the modeling space, any of the loading criteria, then you can regenerate a report, which I will show you. So going back into the modeling space, I'm just going to pick up some of the images. So you just want to take a picture of the isometric view, so just a simple right click, go under report, I'm just call it isometric. Now I'm just going to go a bit all over the place and start picking up a few of the tables and everything. And see the deform shape and everything like that so deformation just click apply I'm just going to take a quick snapshot of this so deformation okay now we just go get some of the results tables the reactions and just pick up this table and put it straight into the diet report as well I've got a few of the parameters in there, just want to go into tools and then diameter report generator. Now we're just going to open up a new document, you can open up a, a template. Or a pre Here we have our working space, so we're just going to drag and drop everything across from the, the working window or the report stream. We can edit any and put any of the text in, so I'm just going to put, put, the, put the design report. You can see it is a Word document open within the working space, so it does have all your header and footer and everything like that. So just bear with me a couple of seconds while it loads up. So there's the isometric view. Here's the deform shape. Just need a couple of moments to transfer across. And we just put the table in there as well. Okay. We can also look at the actual the beams themselves and the section properties. Okay, and that's all the section properties being brought across, and you both look at them before and after the actual construction stage, i.e. the beam and also the beam with the concrete around it. And we can look at the uh, short bill of quantities. So this is a short bill of quantities, as you can see, you have the power pit and everything labelled differently, and the quantities. You can also look at the load combinations, and everything gets dragged across. And we can also generate this report as well, so anything that changes within the working space, you can actually select all and regenerate it. Okay, so now just back to the presentation, just to close quickly. So, thank you for your time. Uh, I know we've uh, we've overrun slightly, so we'll call it a day there. But for a bespoke demonstration, please can you contact Mines UK support team. And uh, the email addresses and the contact information is on the screen there. Thank you once again. We had a great turnout. Uh, more people turned up this time. So and hopefully by the next webinar we'll have even more people turned up and an invite will be sent out to you shortly. All of this content will be uploaded to YouTube along with the, the longer extended training video as well. So look out for that. And please subscribe because if you subscribe you will get the updates. And we're also on all the different media groups now including LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter so thank you for your time